On August 23rd, 2020, Luka Doncic not only had a 43-point triple-double, but also beat the Los Angeles Clippers with a game-winning buzzer beater only. Shaq was not impressed. No, no, he's great, but I've seen that before. His name is Steph Curry. I've yeah. seen that before. His name is James Harden. I've seen it all last week. His name is Damon Lillard. Just calm it down a little bit. That's all I'm You hate him, man. In the previous video, we just watched Shaq tell the nation to calm down a little bit after a second-year Luka Doncic hit a game-winning buzzer beater over the Los Angeles Clippers, a team who had the highest preseason odds to win the championship that year. This was a team that was also built around two wing stars and future Hall of Famers Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, and for this series, Luka would average a near 31-point triple-double, none of which impressed Shaq. I've seen that before. Shaq only told us he had seen this before from three players who were all named to the NBA's top 75 list, an argument that was the exact definition of nitpicking or hating just to hate. Shaq's just a hater but we've seen that before. Shaq during the birth of his second child. His wife, Shaq, the baby is coming. Shaq, I don't care, I've seen it before. Recognize how speechless everyone was by Shaq's baseless hate? Yes, at this point in time, Shaq has gained the reputation of the NBA's biggest hater. However, is this hate at all, or is this Luca clip just Shaq at his most extreme? I say this because in the current media landscape, people get judged in just clips, not long form content. For instance, recently Shaq got a lot of hate for Seemingly piling on Luka Doncic again, if you read the headlines. This is for best point? This is best, best point guard. guard. Or best lead guard. Guard Taking nowadays. Shaq or Luka? I'm going to have to take him. Wow. Luka's a fast player, but this kid, listen, he plays the right way. I like stories like this. Guys yes. that come out of nowhere and then they're forced to be reckoned with. Despite directly saying Luka is a fabulous player, the comments were the same. SGA is amazing, but Shaq low-key been a Luka hater for a while. Don't worry, guys. Shaq thought Shay was just Shaq misspelled, and so he picked himself. The current 2024 MVP odds have Shea Gilgis Alexander at number two, two spots ahead of Luka. So what really is the story here? Is Shaq really the NBA's biggest hater, or is he the king of tough love? Has he been misunderstood all along? What's up guys, Mike here, and we need to remember that in Shaq's life, as a young teenager himself, he was raised by an army sergeant stepfather who to Shaq was dad. And his dad had him playing against grown men who were ruthless with both curse words and elbows in army-based basketball games as again, Shaq was around 13. I said, I'm not in the army, I'm 13. What? To the morning 13. At this point in his life, Shaq reportedly went from terrible to one of the best big men we have ever seen. So when we watch clips like this about Anthony Davis, you decide hate or no hate. Everyone during this segment on TNT is against Shaq. However, he holds strong. Dominant centers close out the fourth quarter, and in this game, Anthony Davis scored 21 points in the first before scoring only two in the fourth. You say Anthony Davis had 21 points in the first half? Yes, he did. Finished and with 28 and 11. That's not good enough. Anthony Davis played pretty good. No, pretty good ain't good enough. You can't have 21 points in the first half and have seven points in the second half. Yeah. Jordan and Pippen had to play great. Okay. Team Olajuwon had to play great for Kenny to get open. But guys, before we continue, I am very excited to thank Ada for sponsoring today's video. As did you know, there are treatments available now for COVID-19. Yup, that means there's something you can do if you do catch it to avoid getting really sick. The colder months are coming up, we all know that, and COVID-19 cases are on the rise. So it is important if you or your loved ones are at high risk of developing severe COVID-19, to know about the treatment options that are available to you if you're eligible. That way we can get that treatment and spend time together. And taking charge of your health is always a smart move. So check out Ada's free questionnaire. It's quick, easy, and helps you get the info you need on COVID-19 to stay healthy this season. Make sure to go click the link down below to see if you're eligible and to learn more about treatment options. Again, the questionnaire is very easy. Just click the link in the description down low. Thank you to Ada for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back into that video. Yes, 28 points in the box score is a good performance. However, when your team loses the game and you score two points in the fourth quarter, how is everyone on your side but Shaq? Shaq had a reason for what he was saying here, and after this clip, the Lakers would win the next four games against the Blazers and eventually win the 2020 bubble championship. Anthony Davis would average 27.7 points and 9.7 rebounds during that stretch as he became the wingman that LeBron James needed, even earning the nickname Bubble AD. A huge step up from his basketball reference nickname of Street Clothes. As you will see the deeper we get into this video, I truly believe Shaq wants to inspire greatness, and this just recently came up with Zion Williamson. I want to make some points about Zion. Okay. Does not run hard. 
It's not a diss. It's going to be a lesson from one great big man to another guy that could be a great big man. Just not run hard. And he doesn't have that look. Uh, if it comes from a great place and a place where they just want to see me do better, thank you. However, in his second season, Zion looked like a future legend after he averaged 27 points per game on 61% shooting. This season, in what should be year five in the league, I'm counting it, he lost a year due to being over 300 pounds. Zion is averaging under 22 points per game. This would be hate if Shaq's claims were baseless. They aren't though, and as Shaq explains, it does come from the right place. You want, you hey. want to see him be the best player he can be. I so, said, you know, he doesn't run hard, doesn't create easy baskets for Herself, and it looked like he's not ready. When it comes to being a dominant big man, I am the authority. I am the go-to guy. This is very important. As Shaq explained, not only does this come from love, not only does Shaq want you to be great, but also he is the authority here. And the players know it. They know it in two ways. One, Shaq is, of course, one of the greatest big men we have ever seen. But two, he's also currently one of the most influential voices in basketball. We will get into Shaq's gigantic influence in a second. What matters first is giving Shaq all of the praise he deserves, the award he won that makes his word credible. Shaq is very open with his own career. He was not Kareem. He did not have as dominant of a long-term stretch. Instead, Shaq makes the claim that he is the most dominant center at one point in time that basketball has ever seen. And his case is a very, very good one. As in the 2000 NBA Finals, Shaq averaged 38 points and 16.7 rebounds a game and also missed nine free throws a game. But it didn't matter. It didn't matter that other teams invented the hack -a shack It didn't matter that Shaq missed every single free throw because he was that much better than everyone else in the block. So when we originally hear a clip like Joel Embiid is soft. Embiid is playing SOF capital T. He's not playing with force. He's looking for the foul. He has a little bandaid on his little hand. Oh, he wants wow. to rep the call the foul. When you go one for ten, it ain't your coach's fault. It ain't your, your teammate's fault. It's your fault. Period. Originally, we can clearly see why this comes off as a bit hater-esque. However, after this clip, Shaq has defended Embiid several times. And everybody's got their MVP ladders. Might it be Jokic? Might it be Embiid? If it's one of those two, who do you give it to? Joel Embiid right now. He's playing the game like he's supposed to play him. Be playing. He's leading, rebounding. He's playing inside. Joel Embiid has not only gone on to win the MVP after the Shaq call out, but also at the end of the day, Shaq knows the hard truth of this league. It don't mean a thing without the ring. And I asked the great Kareem Abdul Jabbar, what do you think about Shaq? And his response was, he's pretty good, but he hasn't won yet. I don't broke my heart, but it was the truth. It broke Shaq's heart that a great one in Kareem would look at Shaq and say, who cares about any of that if you haven't won yet? In Kareem, Kareem's eyes, nothing Shaq did until 2000 mattered. And between 2000 and 2002, Shaq truly does have a case for being the most dominant big man we have ever seen. As yes, the Lakers three-peated, and you might hear, but what was their competition in the NBA Finals? At times, not the best. However, between 2000 and 2002, not a single person has even claimed that they were able to stop Shaq. As between 2000 and 2002, even against Tim Duncan, Shaq averaged a combined 28.6 points and 12.4 rebounds on 57.5% shooting in their 18 games played. Shaq won five of the nine regular season matchups and eight of their nine playoff games. The fact that Shaq's idol in Kareem Abdul-Jabbar did not respect what he had done in a basketball court yet fueled him to true greatness. And so Shaq takes the same approach to his work on TNT. He knows he is now the Hall of Fame center that other players grew up watching and he has taken it upon himself to play the role of tough love dad for young generational talent. Shaq refuses to accept any any Wemby praise. He's never seen a guy like uh, Wemby on it. Yes, you have. His name is Bobo. You think Wemby Bobo? Oh, whoa, whoa, let me, whoa, whoa, let me, whoa. Let, 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 let me finish my they point. They both black or something? No, no. Wemby on is just way more consistent than Bobo. He's only played three games. Yes, we just saw Shaq compare Wemby to Bobo. But as we've also seen, we cannot take these clips at face value. We have to judge them years later. To compare Wemby to Bobo is a ridiculous statement. Unless, in your mind, you're trying to let a younger center know, hey man, until you do a lot more, 
you have not proven anything to me. So while some of Shaq's statements have made headlines, young players still love Shaq. Here's Gigi Jackson, a 19 year old rookie who in his first six games scored just 12 points then was thrust into the national spotlight after a 23 point outburst against the Warriors. Gigi Shaq here, I don't have any questions. I just want to say congratulations, young fella. I'm so proud yes, of you. Well, yes, Gigi, it's an honor to get to hear your voice. Appreciate you. Well, Gigi, you could tell it was Shaq. He, well, he was mumbling. <laughs> um, <laughs> that does not look like the reaction you'd have to a hater. That was the reaction you have when you meet someone you were dying to meet. Gigi had a great reason to smile. As we've spoken about Shaq's greatness, but as for his platform, during last year's NBA playoffs on May 18th, the site MVP Index broke down viewership numbers between ESPN and TNT. And while the numbers for the playoff games themselves were very similar, in terms of pregame coverage, Inside the NBA owned ESPN with an average of 1.43 million views, around 500,000 more than ESPN with 10 broadcasts for TNT compared to just four for ESPN, giving us over 14 million combined views. Inside the NBA also has extreme mainstream credibility, as in 2020, they won the Emmy for weekly outstanding studio show in the sports category. So with Shaq, I really believe if you are an authentic person who truly seeks the best for people and doesn't just hate for no reason, doesn't just hold grudges for no reason, people will respect your word and treat you with incredible respect if you don't believe me here is Shaq with Luca on stage in Croatia as Shaq explains my main man Goran Dragic and Luka Doncic came up there with me that video went viral hey shout out to Luca. when I arrived in Luca's town some people picked me up they drove me to a mansion that Luca had set out for me they uh, escorted me to the show and Luca said Shaq and nothing gonna happen to you while you're in my town Mr. Onilovic so will Shaq still make comments about Luca's game yes Shaq knows the ultimate secret in basketball. He is a former legend who is currently in a post-playing career. Shaq knows you can be the greatest player to ever live, but that only hurts you if you don't win a ring. Sure, the Charles Barkley jokes are funny, and then they became a bit much at times, and they became a lot much at times. We get it, Chuck has no ring. Unfortunately though, Chuck also has no comeback. We have watched several Hall of Famers such as Elgin Baylor, Dominique Wilkins, Patrick Ewing, and John Stockton, just to name a few, fade into the background way more than they should have after not winning an NBA championship during their careers. If that is what Shaq is really pushing for, greatness from the game's best, then is that even hate? To me, it is tough love. I think Shaq is just trying to inspire these guys. I'm curious to see what the comments are on this one. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications if you are new to the channel. That way you never miss a video like this. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You are awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think. And again, have an awesome day.